Evidence-based policing is gaining momentum internationally. While evidence has always been an important part of what police officers do, um, evidence-based policing is a phrase that refers to decision-making that uses evidence and research to be able to inform practice and identify best strategies. Research data is one form of evidence, and this video is to help people be able to critique and appraise um, the quality of a quantitative study that which uses numbers. Being able to assess a research study will help you to gauge its strengths, weaknesses, and applicability. Weaker quality research should not be wholly discounted, though, as the results can still be useful, but they should be considered in light of the study's limitations. You can find existing research in journal articles, in books, in theses, in written reports, and in the media. In the UK, the National Police Library and Polka are an excellent place to start your search for existing research, as well as online resources such as the Policing and Crime Reduction Research Map. Once you've found a piece of research that's relevant to you and your concerns, there are five key steps that you can go through to be able to assess the quality of the research and how its findings apply to you. Step one is to identify the research question and determine whether this is relevant to what you want to find out. The PICO acronym is a tool to help you identify and assess the key components of a quantitative research question. You can learn more about PICO through a dedicated video we've produced, but here we'll briefly describe each component to help you get started. P is for population. Who are the people being looked at in this question? Or problem, what is the issue that is being looked at? I is for intervention. Are researchers proposing to do or change something? Or are they looking at the effects of something already happening? C is for comparison. These would be people who did not receive the intervention. Perhaps they didn't get anything, or they got something different from those who did receive the intervention. O is for outcomes. What are the intended outcomes of the intervention? These will be measurable and help inform the main findings of the study. Once you've found out what the researchers are trying to measure, you want to know what are the main findings of the study. This would be found in the abstract, which is a summary of the study at the beginning of the article. The third step is to assess the quality of the research by looking at the study design, the sample, and the methods. The design of a study affects how confidently we can talk about its findings, the College of Policing developed an evidence ladder that describes the strengths of different designs. For example, a one-off study might only allow us to make broad statements about possible outcomes, whereas a review of five high-quality studies will allow us to make confident recommendations of what works. The number and types of people that are sampled affects our ability to be able to apply our findings to a larger population. Random sampling, where everybody has an equal chance of being selected into the sample, is the best technique for removing bias. Next, we want to look at how was the data collected? Did the researchers use the best methods to answer their research question? For example, when gathering data on private or sensitive issues, a self-completed questionnaire rather than one involving an interviewer may help to ensure genuine responses. Pilot studies can help iron out kinks in data collection, and validating measures can help to prove a study's methods are reliable. Do you trust you could reproduce these results? Step four is to gauge the robustness of the study's results. To what extent do we believe these results are true in the world and not due to chance? Level of significance, also referred to as a p-value, is the way researchers report whether there's a statistically significant relationship between two variables. Social scientists tend to use p less than or equal to 0.05 or p less than or equal to 0.01 which accepts the probability of finding an effect when there isn't one is less than 5 in 100 or less than 1 in 100. Statistical significance tells you whether there is a relationship, but effect size tells you the magnitude of the effect. A general rule of thumb for studies comparing mean differences is an effect size of 0.2 is considered small, 0.5 is considered medium, and 0.8 is considered large. Step five is to return to your question of interest and to consider how these results might be relevant to you. How might they inform your practice?